And finally, how you should conduct a SQL injection attack during an ethical hacking process. Well, first of all, you need to figure out where the databases are and where the web servers are. At a bare minimum, you want to figure out where the web server front end is and potentially look at what the web server is doing, how it's actually accessing the database. Is it crafting dynamic pages? Is it actually using URL parameters to access the database? What is it doing? How is it interacting on the back end? Potentially looking in the source page or page source rather for whatever is going on. There may be code in the page source for sanitizing URLs. That's great. If it's stripping out the SQL injection code in the page source, you can figure out what it's not looking for and what it's not stripping out and use that type of attack. Easily put, if you can't quite figure out how it's sanitizing or if it's sanitizing or where the database is, try a couple of the basic examples that you've seen here and see if they work. They're either going to work or they're not going to work. Oftentimes, very simple attempts like that will not result in alarms. For example, changing the URL or giving it a bad URL on a web server usually just results in a 404. It doesn't actually set off klaxons and, and cut off the internet connection. It'll usually just get you a, a web server error. Hey, I can't find that page or I can't get that parameter. That's fine. Maybe it's an old product number or maybe it's just a mistyped URL. So chalk it up to fat fingering and you won't set off any alarms. If you do find that the web server is vulnerable to some types of injections, you want to find out which. So you may want to actually start expanding your attack, changing the injections from just getting a little bit of information to maybe spoofing a log on, from spoofing a log on to seeing if you can actually form an order on behalf of someone else and maybe send the order to a different address or use different billing information, kind of confuse it that way. And then finally, you want to do all of this before the attack is found. You obviously want to keep this fairly straightforward and fairly quick because at some point accessing the database in the wrong way is going to get caught, whether it's immediately, which is probably less often, or in an audit or in some kind of shipping. So perhaps you're, you're dealing with an e-commerce company and two days later they go to ship an order and notice that the order that should be worth $900 was actually billed for $9. Well, they may not find that during the automated order taking process or the automated process of, of doing the, the billing and getting the uh, order ready and the order packing slip ready. But when it's getting ready to go out or certainly when there's any kind of end of week, end of month, end of year audit, it's going to get caught. At some point, it's going to get caught. So do what you're going to do before it gets caught, obviously documenting thoroughly all the way through.